Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. As promised, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to install any of the bots and apps tools, more importantly, the stock bubbler for today. And I'm actually gonna take this first part of the video and clip it and put it in the members area so that anybody in the future, whoever gets one of these tools, can go ahead and, and learn how to install it. It's pretty easy. They have instructions on their website, but I just figured to make the videos anyway because I do get emails every now and then of people asking how to do something. So I went ahead and made this video, but um, basically what we're doing is we're installing the new stock bubbler tool. It's really not different from any of the other tools in terms of the installation, but to run the tool, it's a little bit different because you do need an open AI API key. And uh, in this process, in today's video, I'm not only going to show you the installation, but I'm going to show you how to get the key and how to actually make the tool work. So you avoid any future errors or anything like that, because um, I got like an email from, what's his name? Sorry, forgive it. Uh, Jason. Jason uh, emailed me. Shout out to Jason in the comments. Uh, he emailed me and he, he was asking, uh, he's getting like an error 429, error 404, error 400. What do I do? How do I fix it? Etc. cetera. Um, and what I actually did was I realized I didn't get any of those errors because I had a open AI key uh, for the longest and I had already gone through all the formalities of creating it and all that. But if you've never had an open AI key before, um, I'm showing you exactly what you have to do so that you can avoid any of the errors or anything like that. Go in and use the key and use the tool and make money uploading stock photography, all that kind of stuff uh, to your website. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, if you once again see any you know, kind of thing on the screen, uh, just pause the screen, watch it back, play it, and feel free to add some comments, any questions, uh, I'll, I'll be happy to answer them, alright? So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so what you guys are seeing here is the beginning process of me downloading the, the tool. So you're going to see my license key, it's going to be blurred, obviously there's going to be a black piece on the screen. Uh, I'm not going to show my license key, but I'm going to go ahead and hit the download button on the zip file. And notice here on my uh, download section, it's in a zip format, okay? So what I'm doing next is I copy my license key code and then I go over to the tool and I'm going to right click on the tool, or actually I'm gonna move the tool, sorry. I'm gonna move the tool from my downloads to my desktop just to make things easier, okay? Just to make my life a little bit easier and give you guys a visual. So if you notice, right now the tool, and I had to pause this, but the tool is right now on my desktop in my finder, and my finder just basically the little window that shows all my files, and it's also on my desktop as in my screen, right? My screensaver, my my um, my home page on my computer, basically, right? And it's in a zip format. You can see how it doesn't look like a normal folder. It's in this white color, and it's got a zip on it. If you're using Windows, it will look somewhat similar, right? It will look like it has like a little zip, uh, you know, graphic on the actual thing. So what you have to do at this point is first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to your browser and you're going to go to your extensions page. Now notice what I did here is I clicked these three little buttons and I hit extensions. Okay. So this, if you're, it depends what tool you're using. You could use the Vivaldi browser. You could use Chrome, but notice I want it. I want you guys to notice something. I only have one window open of Chrome. I don't have two windows, meaning this whole entire browser, it's just one. I don't have two versions of Chrome open. I don't have multiple tabs. I only have one. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to go to extensions. So once I hit those three little dots, I'm going to hit extensions. You could do the same thing in Vivaldi. Okay, Vivaldi is a browser if you're going to be using this with other tools like the Zazzle tool, the Redbubble tool, all these kind of tools, they require you to only have one window. Okay, if you have any kind of search error or anything like that, that is because you have more than one window and the tool cannot find the proper page to target. So anyways, what you need to do is you're going to go over here and hit extensions. So you're going to watch me click extensions, manage extensions, and now I'm on my extensions page. And here I'm turning developer mode on. When you turn it on, it will have these three buttons that appear that says load unpacked, pack extension, and update. And it will be like a little blue trigger kind of thing. Now I'm opening the zip file. And the way I do it is I literally just click open. That's it. Some people double click their zip files. Some people do whatever. Now if you notice, once I open my zip file, 
and I'm pausing this as well, you could see on my screen I have the zip file and then I have the folder of the zip file. And you'll see in a second here, when I click on the folder, there's going to be other files inside of it. So really what this folder is, is it's called a macro folder because it holds all the micro components. So all I'm doing is I'm taking the folder that holds everything and dragging and dropping it into the extensions. If for some reason you have an issue, you see me here deleting it, all you have to do is go into your uh, Chrome or your browser, hit load unpacked, find the macro folder, click on it, don't click on anything inside and hit open or select or whatever, and boom, installed as well. Okay, so now you have your tool installed and everything is good to go. So once again, if you're using any kind of tool like the Zazzle tool, the, the Redbubble Rocket Tagger tool, all these kind of things only have one window open of the browser that you're using when you eventually go use the tool, right? So after you put in your license key, after you do all that, you only keep one window open, not one, you know, not have a hundred tabs, one window. You can't have like, you can't have multiple windows of Chrome open, meaning one instance. If you look at my desktop, right? I only have one window. I don't have four different uh, pages of Chrome open. And tabs and windows are really not the same thing. Just go on Google and search the difference between a tab and a window. They're not the same thing. If I right click on my Google icon, it will say new window or it will say new tab. You don't want either one. You just want basically one page when you're actually out there using the tool because I can't tell you how many messages I get from people saying, hey, I'm trying to run the Instagram bot. Hey, I'm trying to run the Zazzle tool. Hey, I'm trying to run the Instagram tool and it keeps telling me error, uh, need to refresh the page or, or something to that effect um, because it can't find the right page. You have to have only one window open. So if anything fails, just close it all down, open it with one window, one tab, and you'll be perfectly fine. Now let's go ahead and start talking about the installation of the actual stock bubbler to get it to be working. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to that. Okay, guys, so right now we're going to keep the video going here, and now we're going to be showing you the OpenAI API key creation. It's a good idea to watch this whole entire video, and by the way, if, it, if the screen ever goes black, like probably about right now, it's because things are just trying to be blurred out. That's all it is. So basically, in order to use a tool, you need to have an API key. Now, what you guys are seeing probably on the screen, like a glimpse of it, is my first API account. So what I did was I logged completely out as if I'm going out there to create a brand new account. And that's exactly what I did for this tutorial so that you guys can see how that kind of goes. So all I'm going to do is put in my information, you know, my name, my my company, my birthday, obviously, it will probably be blurred. You guys won't see that information. And then once I'm in, I have access to now an API key. Now, just because I have access, that doesn't mean I um, the job is done. At first, I have to verify myself. So verify phone number. And probably this part is blurred as well, where I enter my phone number. And um, then I have to add the code that I get from my phone number. And by the way, the phone number that I added, I had already used on my other account. So I didn't have to... Um, I'll get a little notification in a second. Yeah, a note on credits. So I didn't get like any free API credits because I know when you sign up to OpenAI, you get API credits that are free. So first I created a key and I called it test and you guys will see me create it. And I don't mind showing the key here because after this video, the key is going to be deleted anyway. So I went inside the tool, hit the settings button and pasted it inside the open a key, API key form. And now I can somewhat use the tool. I can't use the tool on Dolly 3 because I have not fully went through the verification process, but I can use it for Dolly 2. And you can see here, I actually started creating an image on Dolly 2. And as long as it says processing image, then it's probably going to create the image. So what I did was I clicked out of it. And just to test it, I clicked Dolly 3. And you're going to see me get an error here uh, where I just typed in the word dog and it said error 429. Now, if you go to the OpenAI's website, it tells you what these errors are. And the error is a limit error. So it's a usage error. And I actually want to kind of explain this. 
OpenAI has limits depending on how new your account is and how much budget and all that kind of stuff you have there. I'm actually opening up the article here that kind of explains it. So somebody else had the same issue. Basically, OpenAI says if you have over $10 in the account, then you can access GPT-4. GPT-4 is not only the language model, but also Dolly 3 combined. So if you want to use Dolly 3, you need to have at least $10 in the account. So I'll kind of show you what I did in just a minute. I went over here to my limits and it says, notice it says spend at least $5 on the API to move up to the next sector. And I have $5 worth of credits. So I hit uh, add payment details here. And this is where I literally added my credit card. So after adding the credit card, I put initial credit purchase and I'm purchasing $11. So more than 10. And here, um, some people like to turn this on where they immediately have credits flown in. And I kind of understand that. But for me, because I don't need that, this is like my second account and I don't have virtual assistants using this. And I literally only created this account for tutorial purposes. I'm personally going to be shutting it off, right? So I'm shutting it off here. And then what I did is I'm continuing to pay. So probably you guys are going to see a uh, blur over my credit card info, but it's going to be blur, um, payment paid. So now my balance is up. So really what, um, uh, API, uh, open AI does is you have to essentially spend over a certain amount to get that. Now these are credits. So these credits are not used yet. I can use them in the creation of stuff, whether it be in the creation of my tags or in the creation of an image. And you can see here, I first tested it by creating another Dolly 2 image. And I wrote out a little, um, prompt that I'm going to use for Dolly 1 and Dolly 2 and by, uh, excuse me, Dolly 2 and Dolly 3. But you can see here, it says still, it sells failed 429. All it needs is a little bit of time for it to propagate. Some people have dealt with a few hours uh, of waiting time. Some people have dealt with a few minutes. You'll see literally in a minute or two, it will work perfectly fine. And I looked in my limits and I had Dolly 3 available to me as a model because I, you know, made the payment and the payment once again, I'm going to be clear is just on credits and I actually show my invoice there. I should probably blur out the invoice number as well. But anyways, you get the point. So I kept trying uh, uh, the the button for Dolly 3. It still wasn't working. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just a matter of time until it works. Like I said, for some people, they need a few hours for the system to update. For me, it just took a few minutes. And I'm sure for you guys, it will be somewhat the same. Maybe a half hour, maybe an hour, whatever. So this is what I did to kind of test the waters here. If you see, um, I... Uh, let's see. I clicked on limits. Once again, I verified that Dolly 3 was in my list. And just because it's in your list doesn't mean you're necessarily approved. You still have to go through everything I just showed you. And what I did was I opened up the tool, right? This is me just kind of looking at this here. Um, let me see what I did here. Yeah. So I opened up the tool and I typed in the word fish, uh, just to get some tags going. And then there we go. We got some keywords. So now that I kind of see that it's working with no issues in that area, I selected Dolly 2. So I just wanted to test it just to make sure it's working. I pasted the prompt and Dolly 2 is working as it should have always been working. You know, there's nothing there, uh, no reason why it shouldn't have. Um, and then it comes out with an image. So the reason why I created this image is just to show you guys the difference between Dolly 2, Dolly 3. And then finally, Dolly 3. I went here, clicked the same prompt, hit image generation, and it actually worked. So Dolly 3 worked. So that's kind of what it took to get Dolly 3 to work. And just to confirm that it worked, uh, in the next video clip, you'll see me create another image that's a little bit more um, advanced. So you'll see that in the next clip. Okay, so here we are in the next clip. And you could see here, I'm opening up the stock bubbler tool. And I'm going to go into my image generation and I'm going to create now a prompt from the, uh, the prompter kind of tool that helps me give, get, add all these cool keywords to my prompt. And by the way, guys, if you're using Leonardo, if you're using whatever tool out there, mid journey, whatever, you can absolutely use this tool within stock bubbler to get all these different keywords and implement them in your business. So here I wrote teenage girl, cyberpunk, superhero, warrior, um, and I wasn't even thinking of these. I just started using the tool as inspiration and I wrote sword and then I hit process. And this is once again on Dolly three and look at the type of image it comes out. It's going to be a great image. 
Uh, let's just give it a second. It's processing. Boom. There's the image. I go ahead and hit the download button in the right hand corner. I open up the image and there you go. That's a Dolly 3 image. And that's pretty much it for this clip as well. All right, guys. So thank you for watching. I hope this video helped out. If you have any questions whatsoever, leave them in the comments down below, and hopefully I can get back to you and answer your questions. But this is effectively how you install the tool, how you make sure you don't run into any issues with the API key. As you can see, um, I pretty much replicated the issues that pretty much 99.9% .9 of people will experience, and uh, that's how you handle them. So super simple, just some stuff that you got to handle on the open AI dashboard. And now you guys got everything you need. So thank you for watching. I appreciate it. I will talk to you guys soon. And uh, yeah, check out the free members area uh, with the free videos and the paid content in the description box down below. And I'll see you guys soon. Peace out. Bye.